Oh my guys, welcome back. I'm not going mad, I promise. Well, actually I might be, I'm not entirely sure. I am talking to myself in my shed at the moment. We've been doing a bit of shooting with these Crossman premieres of late. Now these are the old ones. We've already established that these ones from 16 years ago are significantly better, much better in terms of performance and the way they're actually formed than the more modern domed ultra magnums so they're both a 10.5 grain 4.5 millimeter 177 pellet now these modern ones are nowhere nearly as consistently formed as the older ones i got thinking there's a few secrets especially in the world of pellet preparation at the highest levels of this sport in the world of 10 meter shooting and olympic target shooting they'll often rumble the pellets so they'll have basic pellet whatever they may have that's already matched their barrels but they will often go through a small tumbling device or in fact they're quite large actually they look almost like a great big thing from a like a village fate you know then great big tombola machines they have massive versions but of course didn't have anything like that to hand so i've just got myself a hexagon shaped jar and i rumbled these in the lathe with no cutting media or anything so just these loose pellets in the lathe so when you see the pictures you can see that they're significantly better formed now the seams have all but gone they've got a sort of semi-dimpled finish as well which is quite interesting and they certainly look a lot cleaner and a lot tidier than the ones directly from the tin so hopefully we haven't ruined them in terms of actual pellet preparation to pop them in a rumbler set them off for an hour and come back to them it's probably one of the least labor intensive sort of prep regimes that you might better go through but they certainly look better i certainly feel more confident these are going to be better but we'll get everything set up and i'll see you at the farm and we'll see whether we've ruined them or not or whether we've hit on something that might be worth looking into so i'll see you in a moment let's go gopro's on hopefully the gopro is sorted now i've got a fresh sd card and i've formatted the older ones so this is the first test Wow, okay, so they're definitely, definitely smaller. That's glided in there beautifully. That slid into the barrel nicely. And even that little rim around the back edge of there hasn't really caused any restriction. So they are definitely undersized compared to the pre-rumbled state. Left-hand side of the card, we were somewhere near zero when we used this last, but don't worry about the point of impact too much. Just looking at the group sizes more than anything. No way. I bang on the centre line a little bit higher. Now, if I remember right, when we used these before, okay, so that one's really loose. So, of course, they weren't consistently sized in the first place. Now, this has probably made them even more inconsistent in size. Now, little tip for you. There's enough of us been shooting these 9015s for a long period of time now. Generally, they prefer a slightly looser fitting pellet, not slack but they don't tend to like pellets that are really a firm push into that rifling. That one felt much more like the first one, so. So I literally just gone through the same hole. Now don't forget we haven't weighed or sorted or sized any of these, but it would probably be a good shout to size them or at least measure them first and sort them into batches. Because of course, the longer you rumble it for, it stands to reason the smaller they're going to get. So that one felt just a little bit tighter. So there's definitely some inconsistencies. Now, they were inconsistently sized to start with, but they were all significantly tighter to get in the barrel. They are a lot easier now. They're going into the barrel a lot nicer. I'm just going to move on to the lip card to the right of that. Now, of all the videos I've done, of course, I do this every day. I'm playing with rifles. It's my job. Of all the videos so far, I had no idea how this one's going to turn out. I was literally completely going in blind i thought it might be a mad idea we've had a bit of discussion now on the old air gun forum most people said that i was a complete lunatic however oh okay that one skewed off was that me hmm. that one's gone up the same spot how peculiar maybe they're just settling into the barrel Can't explain that. Well, they started off pretty well. They seem to have got a little more inconsistent. I'm just going to um, go and check the GoPro's okay. We'll come back to that and have another go. But currently the GoPro seems to be behaving, which is good. So I'm going to shut up now, concentrate and see what's going on. But that first little group was great. It seems to have opened up a little bit.
Hmm. Let's get a flip at them, shall we? Might be a bit too early to draw any conclusions yet, though. Right then, so just a little under 25 yards. These were the first ones. Now, these squares are 5.5 millimetres across, so they're the size of a 2-2 pellet. The red circle in the middle is just under a centimetre. It's about nine and a bit millimetres. So ideally, you want to keep everything in this red circle. That would be perfect for the majority of your field target, hunter field target, pest control, that sort of stuff. Of course, if you're bench rest shooting, you're going to be working to much tighter tolerances than I am here. Now, that group there, strangely, looks very similar to the standard ones from the tin. They felt a lot nicer to load, but we started off with a decent group, quite a nice tight little group. This one here, I'm sure now if we ran and load more off, we'd end up keeping them all in that little red circle. Of course, I haven't adjusted the scope from the JSB Heavy Zero, so of course we'd want to just give them a couple of clicks to the left. But apart from that one that dropped a little bit low, I mean, here's the thing. If you put an inconsistent ammo into a tumbler, of course, it's already when it's manufactured all the different sizes. Of course, you are highly unlikely to ever then get them back out of a tumbler more consistently sized, but they certainly feel a lot better to load. There's no marks on my thumb. There's definitely some mileage in this, I reckon. What we're going to do, we're going to go down onto these lower three cards here, and we're going to use the ones that were tumbled for an additional 20 minutes. So they had 80 minutes in total. So what leads me to believe is that they're going to be slightly sort of smoother loading if you like marginally more undersized if anything then we'll go on to the XTI shall we and then we'll see if we can run some out to a bit further distances because it's quite nice out so let's do it now next ones these are the ones that have been tumbled for 80 minutes they've had an additional 20 minutes over the first lot now it stands to reason that they'll be smaller and therefore easier to mm, that felt beautiful Right, middle right target. Be good if they all stayed like that. I think we may have inadvertently stumbled into a bit of a wormhole here. Because if you've got some pellets that are a little bit tighter than you'd like, something like that, maybe giving them a rumble will bring them down in size. Now, of course, depending on the time and the speed that they're rumbled, you can probably work out how much material it will take off or at least peen it back onto the pellet. It's funny how you get one that drops a little bit low and left. It was the same with the unrumbled versions as well. What is noticeable though is that this is zero for the JSB heavies. The point of impact now of the rumbled versions is much closer to that of the heavies than it was before they were rumbled. These actually feel better still loading these. Oh, there you go, that, that one. That's just dropped straight in there. Basically no resistance at all, so let's see where that goes. What do you reckon, up high? How does that work? I mean, how does that work? Marginally higher, but still within the little red circle right that one felt beautiful right so based on this experiment with this barrel at this power level the ones that have been rumbled for 80 minutes are giving slightly tighter groups than the ones that were rumbled for 60 minutes and they're all giving marginally better groups than the ones that were straight out the can oh you absolute piece of junk Well, frustrating about the GoPro messing around, but hopefully we've got some of that on there. So we started off then, these are the ones that have had 80 minutes. They started off pretty good. It's weird how we always seem to get one that drops off left. So I did pretty good groups to start with. Then they opened up again, quite a few flyers there, quite scattered. Then they tightened right up with one flyer. So I wonder if we're just getting some deposits in the barrel, it's rapidly clearing. Yeah, that's gonna be quite interesting. Maybe I need to give this barrel a bit of a pull through and an examination, but all of those groups, are uh, probably, well, that's probably nearer to what you'd get, or I was getting at least, straight out the tin. Certainly some improvement here, apart from these odd flyers, but we've certainly got some potential there. It certainly hasn't made them any worse. Like I say, if you put inconsistent ammo into a tumbler to start with, it's gonna come out more inconsistent, but certainly much nicer loading. There's no marks on my thumb. They're a lot easier to use, but have they really improved them? Hmm. Anyone's guess? Right, let's go on to the XTI and see if we can sort this bloody GoPro out. Okay, rifle swap. Got the old XTI on the go. Let's go back to the one hour tumbled one. So it's kind of panning out how I thought it might do. Of course, 
course, if you put inconsistent ammo into a rumbler, it's still gonna come out inconsistent, but the surface finish on these is significantly improved. The flashing's all gone, which then begs the question of what happens if you put decent ammo in. I think maybe we'll come back to this and um, put some of my nice JSB heavies or something in there and see what happens to those. <laughs> you may not even see that on the GoPro, that's gone up really high. Now this has got the more traditional probe loading arrangement. I can't feel these into the barrel or anything like that. Oh my God. Okay. These two have gone through the same hole, wildly different point of impact. Now the last time we used this with those pellets, we brought it roughly onto a zero where it is now. So with the unmodified ones, we should be knocking that red circle out. down so this is now got the elevation settings for a JSB heavy at this range here <laughs> wow I mean they appear to have tightened up marginally let's move on to the card on the right incredible how the different barrel loading arrangements perform differently now they were largely similar in terms of the original groupings before we tumbled them in fact there was barely any difference between them it's always quite hard to tell the difference between the groups of the 9015 and the XTI but certainly here in this instance the Annie's got the edge I think we're going to come back to this definitely again. I'm going to um, get one of the head measuring gauges sorted and then we can actually rumble them and then we can sort them by head size. It's funny, the ones that drop low always drop down low and left. Now, if you remember from the last video when we used these straight from the tin, there were sort of three distinct impact points. We had some that were coming in just above the sort of crosshairs, if you like, some that were fairly on the crosshairs and then there was always some that dropped low and left. In fact, they're all coming in a little bit left because of the wind. But, of course, what we've effectively done is undersized them all a tiny bit. How weird. All right, we have the last one of these. So I think it's probably a fail in this. Wow, absolute shotgun. Well, they're definitely not doing too well. We're sort of looking a good inch groups, so pretty poor. Um, just in case of this guy and pear shapes, I actually rumbled, I've got them in here and my thing's just blown away. I've got a small amount, so these are the boxed premieres. So these are the old ones, the 16 year old ones, which are significantly better out of the box. They were a little bit tighter in the barrel, but they are a much nicer formed pellet in the first place. These had an hour. So what we'll do, we'll see whether or not these ones run through there. Let's just not mix these up. stands to reason that these may be better of course the better quality ammo you put in the rumbler the better quality it's going to come out or certainly at least the more consistent it's going to come out so let's find out because these are actually pretty good through this barrel right so these are rumbled only box premieres let's give them a bust to get the GoPro on okay so these ones were significantly better out of the box than the tinned versions but they were very tight in the barrel so if anything if they're just brought down a smidgen in size, but still as consistent as they were, hopefully we might actually get some decent results. Now, it might take a little while for these to settle into the barrel. So middle two targets. Ooh. So now all of these Crossman Premiers, they're pretty grotty out of the cans or out of the boxes. They do generally want to clean the surface finish on these after they've been rumbled was significantly better. The rumbler had picked up a lot of the swarf and a lot of the little shavings that are in the skirts on them. Let's just hope that these work. Didn't do too many of these. I need to save some to chrono it. Hey. 
had the first one that looks like it's skewed off a little bit. Again, they all seem to go that same way. Right, one more little group of these, then we better chrono these and see how they're looking. We haven't got too many of them. We need a bigger sample size really than what we've actually got, but these appear to be tightening up a little bit. And that one skewed way off. <laughs> well, that's the first of the lot that's gone up left. So when you put good quality ammo into a rumbler, you're probably looking at potentially no gains at all. Of course, they're gonna come out marginally undersized. Now, the groups that we shot with the good quality prems were definitely better pre-rumbling. So straight out of the box, the older premieres were better than the rumbled versions, but the really scabby ones out of the tin, they are probably marginally better in the right guns. So there's potentially some merit in tumbling them. Remember, I'm not a nutcase. This does go on behind closed doors, top tier shooting, but of course you may well rumble them, then sort them, weigh them, prep them further, wash and lube them. But certainly shows that there's potentially some merit in them maybe i don't know we'll have to look at these cards when we get back home i'm going to get the chrono set up now and we'll see what it does to the power of these when they're slightly undersized about an inch overall about an inch pretty much the same so these are the ones the boxed premieres we've got a couple of major flyers these were the first one this was the first one that we shot of course and it tightened up so actually not too bad but not as good as the unrumbled versions however the groups that we shot with the rumbled poor ones in the 9015 were significantly better unfortunately i haven't got enough of the boxed ones that are tumbled but i would be surprised if they weren't better than that so overall quite interesting will rumbling improve a poorly formed and a poor consistency pellet no definitely not but can it be used to improve the surface finish on decent ones potentially yes See what I mean? It's a bit of a worm. We need to look at this in a bit more detail, but overall, um, mixed results. 9015's definitely won the day with the rumbled pellets, but as I think I mentioned at the beginning, the 9015s actually do prefer a smaller or a looser fitting pellet in the barrel, generally speaking. The XTI, it's hard to tell because, of course, the probe loading arrangement, you can't really feel it in. However, that does seem to be generally pretty good with most things at the cans and the tins, but the rumbled ones, not so much. Right, let's get the chrono going, shall we? Right, hopefully you can see that. First ones then, so we've got one hour rumbled ones. We'll just get a couple off. First two shots will be the one hour rumbled ones. 662, just over 10 foot pounds. 657, let's go and have one of those. That one felt really tight. 638. No wonder they're not consistent down range. All over the place. Right, so they were the one hour ones. Let's go to the 80 minute ones. So these are the tinned versions, don't forget. Oh, that felt really tight, that one. Six ninety. wow. Gives you an idea of just how broad a spread you can get with inconsistent ammo as well, to be fair. Okay, right, let's go on to my last five. So the ones that we're doing now, that's the boxed prem. So these were the better quality ones that had an hour of rumbling. This is probably quite a good case study actually, guys, into when you see people having problems saying that they're not great over the chrono. Look, this is an absolute example of what happens between consistent ammo and inconsistent ammo. So what's that, six feet per second spread over them five or six shots compared to the junk before that. That's incredible, really. You can see how much more consistent it is. Now, in fact, in the last video, this normally makes 710 feet per second with a JSB Heavy, which are a more efficient pellet. And these generally were running at 20 to 30 feet per second slower in the unrumbled. So they definitely got a little bit slower after rumbling, which is strange. But anyway, that's a really good case study and difference between ammo, the consistency and the size of the ammo, what that means downrange, and also what that means over the chrono look. 
great. Right, I'll see you at home. We've got a fair bit to talk about. I think air rifles are generally probably the most frustrating thing known to man. Just when you think you've got a, a pattern emerging, you think we oh, might be onto something, then of course, yeah, not bad with the 9015 to start with. Started to get a little bit erratic, but then <laughs> the XTI would not shoot them for Toffee. That's ridiculous. I mean, 9015 styres, both of those, you load the pellets directly into the back of the barrel, and generally speaking, a slightly looser fitting pellet performs better in those than a tighter fitting one. So that would certainly be something we can say that we've learnt from this. Ultimately, rumbling a poor quality and poorly formed and poorly sized pellet is not going to magically make them all that much better. Of course, everything was just undersized by a small amount. Now, I think what we might well do is revisit this test at a later date with better quality pellets to start with. And then maybe we can see if we went and say did 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes in the tumbler to see how much it brings each pellet undersized because that may be quite useful for some of the pellets that are a bit tight, especially if you're using H&Ns for instance, a good quality H&N, sometimes they're a bit tight in some barrels so it may well mean oh we can rumble them for 10 minutes and they'll be perfect for your barrel. So not everything is lost just yet but they were pretty poop to be honest overall. The groups really are quite surprised with the XTI you've seen it before that is an absolute tack driver as is the 9015 but that really didn't like these pellets even with the boxed ones that are better quality and better over the chrono as well still all over the place so unfortunately i think it's a bit of a fail in that maybe there is some merit in the 9015 now this rumbling this is a common thing in the 10 meter target shooting area and of course they are using things like 9015 styres, fine work bows, that sort of thing as opposed to probe loading XTIs so maybe there is something in it maybe there isn't I mean the sample sizes that we've got is really too small to draw any real conclusions don't get me wrong this is not a perfect test even remotely however the most interesting thing I think from the day is the chrono strings using the box premiere, as you can see, the last six shots on there are significantly more consistent. Now, they were rumbled for an hour as well. So it just goes to prove that if you're having issues, you might get a broad 30 to 40 feet per second spread over a string. Well, that's not necessarily always going to be the rifle. Most people would say it's the rifle, but you can easily see that inconsistent pellets can do that. Now, it's certainly not beyond the realms of possibilities for some of these weird and wonderful pellets that you see, some of the budget stuff. These big spreads, these big changes in size through a tin will give you these quite wild chrono readings but of course you can see straight away with the last six here that actually the rifle is as it ought to be a little bit down on power um, again probably because the pellets are undersized it's going to probably need the power up in but then of course if you're working within a power limit I can't really turn the XTI up I'm not really don't need to don't want to I'm not going to be using these pellets going forward however this makes 11.5, 11.6 with a JSB heavy, so I really don't have any leeway to turn it up if I wanted to. I can imagine with the right combo of rumbling, weighing, sizing, or not as so much sizing, but measuring so you can batch them out so you know that every single one has got a decent surface finish, weighs the same, measures the same as another, and you can break them down into batches, great. For me, outdoors, shooting like this, for most of us probably, I'd imagine it's a waste of time. When such small margins can mean the difference between a win and a loss then of course you're going to spend that time but for outdoor shooting you just as well spend the money and buy better quality pellets i don't think there's an awful lot that we're going to be able to do to these to really suddenly turn them into a jsb heavy or a field target trophy pellet you know have we learned anything well not really but certainly them chrono strings there that explains an awful lot and it just gives you an idea of how important decent size decent weight and consistent ammo is you can see straight away that Poor ammo means poor chrono results. It sounds obvious, but some people get so bent out of shape that it's not necessarily accurate over the chrono. Yeah, so super frustrating overall, really. It was nice to get out. I was hoping, certainly when it started off, I thought we might be onto something, but looking at how the XTI grouped with these, certainly I don't think I'm going to go too much further with this. Although I will definitely do some timings. I'm going to rumble some of my decent pellets. Let's say do 10, 20, 30 minutes, whatever, and then work out how I can bring them undersized because I've got a few pellets that are quite tight, in particular barrels hurt the thumb loading them. If I can just shave off a few thou off of them, or even a few microns off of them, that would probably be all right. So, yeah, overall, interesting, nice to get out. I don't think we're going to spend too much time going much further with this, but, yeah, that'll do it then, guys. I'll see you in the next one.